Manchester by the Sea. I am Joe. I'm Ethan, and one of us is going to love it, one of us is going to hate it. Let the coin decide their fate. I hate it. Hey guys, don't burn our, I love it, don't burn our house down, there's spoilers ahead. Alright, uh, and this movie currently holds a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, which makes it certified fresh. Uh, Ethan, since you hate this film, yep. the first question is uh, for you. Uh, this comes from James Bar- Bar- James Berardinelli of RealViews.com. Uh, he says, Unforced acting coupled with a nuanced, insightful script uh, to tell a story that, although seemingly simple, is achingly complex. So, uh, can you? how natural were the, the lead acting roles, and how did it mesh overall with the script? You have one minute. All right, so if we're talking about acting, Michelle Williams just got to be herself for the first part of the movie until her family dies. And then we see her in one other scene, really, besides over the phone. That's like two minutes long, and she's really good in it, and that's fine. That's... It's not hard to act well for two minutes. Go Michelle Williams, great, you're barely in this movie. Casey Affleck is just droning on through this movie. Everything that we interpret as depth out of him is all just circumstantial in the movie. You know, he burned his family alive, three of his kids are dead, and now his brother is dead, and now he's gotta take care of his other kid. We see those circumstances play out on the screen, so all he has to do is kinda be deadpan and drunk and sad, and we like, oh my god, he's so brilliant! Cool! No, the movie is just, it sets up this worst case scenario for a person and then it just makes them, you know, whisper act the way through the whole thing and that calls it good. Okay, uh, thank you. Joe, you have 30 seconds to respond. See, I disagree because I feel like Ethan completely forgot about all the flashback scenes with Michelle Williams and Casey Affleck when they were married and had kids and they were really happy. And there was at least three of those scenes where you see him in his, like, family setting and how he's a happy man who's like just doing his thing and having fun and just like goofing off and like messing with his wife a little bit but you can tell they love each other so you see that juxtaposed with his current state and just being so depressed and then you learn why he's so antisocial. Okay, uh, thank you, Joe. I'll cut you off there. Uh, Ethan, you have a 15 seconds to respond? So he basically has to go from happy to sad. And that's essentially what you just said. He basically has to play, oh, I love my kids and I love my wife, to, oh, I'm sad and I drink a lot and I get in fights at a bar. Okay, uh, Joe, you have a final 15 to respond? No, because you see you see the depth when he actually tries, when his nephew's like, you need to just come in and talk to her mom so I can try to fuck her. So he goes in and he's actually trying. He's trying to be a part of society, but he just... His mental state just will not allow him to do that. Okay, uh, thank you, Joe. And this next question is for you. This comes from Armand White of the NationalReview.com. And uh, bear with me, because this one is quite a doozy. That's the Moonlight guy, isn't it? Uh, it is. Uh, he's a fan, fan favorite of the show, apparently. Uh, he says, Manchester by the Sea is being overpraised because it indulges American self-pity. All the arrogant liberal indifference to the military, verging on treason or at least insensitivity, that Angley zeroes in on... Uh, as a, is symptomatic of our contemporary polarization. Can, can I stop you real fast? Yeah. Did he say Ang Lee? Yeah. The director? Yeah, Ang Lee. Oh, can uh, you reread that sentence? All of the arrogant liberal indifference to the military, verging on treason or at least insen- insensitivity, that Ang Lee zeroes in on. Uh, uh, this is a review for the long halftime walk. No, it, this is definitely one for a. Uh, for man- oh, because he compared the two. Oh, okay. So, okay. all the arrogant liberal indifference to the military verging on treason, or at least insensitivity that Ang Lee zeroes in on, uh, is a symptom is symptomatic to our contemporary polarization. Gets his place in this melodrama. So he thinks, you know, uh, that the long the long walk of Billy Zane and uh, this are in the same vein of movie. So can you speak on the way this film can be even misconstrued a little bit as treason is this and anti-military? You have one minute. Okay, I, I have not watched Billy Zane's very long halftime walk. I have not watched that movie, so I can't speak about that movie. But Manchester... It's a lot to remember, though. <laughs> Manchester, I don't think has a military presence at, at all. It's just a man trying to deal with his grief, or he's not even trying to deal with his grief. It's a man who's 
It's, it's showing his inability to deal with his grief. Like that's what Manchester's about. So I don't know where he's going with the military thing and the treasonous bit. Like, is he, I, I guess, is he saying, what's his name? Uh, Armand White. So is Armand White saying Manchester is just perpetuating the uh, image of pussy liberals because the military elite have lost a lot more in war than this piece of shit has in his real life? I mean, I don't want to Possibly? speak for Armand White, but I'm going to say yes. Uh, he's wrong. Mm. Okay, I mean... Okay, uh... I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you there because I really am interested in where this is going, but Ethan, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to go on with that thought. You can go ahead and have 15. Finish the thought. No, essentially, yeah. Like, like the military guys have, have lost a lot. Like, no, I don't think anybody denies that. People who go to war lose a lot. They lose their friends and mentally they get messed up. But the, they're, they're two completely different stories. This, this guy... Essentially, he, the way he sees it, he murdered his kids. So, two completely different mindsets. Okay, Ethan, uh, go ahead. I think that this true American is actually talking about how this movie focuses a lot on people that we should not focus as much on when the military exists, when there are people who are losing their loved ones in a time of war, and the people and the sacrifices that they've made abroad and at home, and you know the poor health care that they're receiving. I think that it's very important to instead focus on that and understand that you know our country comes first, not necessarily this bland melodrama with the chick from Dawson's Creek. Okay, uh, Joe, you have 15 seconds to respond. I mean, Hacksaw Ridge came out this year. American Sniper came out a few years. These movies exist. And Ethan was texting More me about... Shot. about uh, He was texting me about movies about grief. And I, I was trying to think about it, and I couldn't really come up with too many movies about grief. So, I mean, every movie can't be the same. That, then it just becomes propaganda. Okay, uh, thank you, Joe. Ethan, you have a final 15 to respond? I don't think it's propaganda to love America. Oh, my God. Didn't uh, say it was... I, I think you did. And I'm reading between the lines here, and okay, you well, did. Well, I'm going to, you know, open up the floor and let you guys discuss for uh, four minutes and go. Okay. So you just thought Casey Affleck grumbled along for two, two, two and a half, oh, two, completely. two, 15. Like eight hours, yes. So you didn't, you didn't read any of the depth? Well, no, I saw the depth. You didn't I saw think what they were going trying. for. They, they, they established okay. that there were circumstances here. They established that he should be sad and that he should mm -hmm. be inconsolably sad. We understand why he doesn't want to sleep with the multiple women who try to sleep with him in this movie. Literally, who? the the, the woman in the beginning of... when he's fixing the plumbing, and then there's the woman in the bar like the, five the, the, minutes hold later. On, hold on a second. The woman in the in the beginning who tells him off. No, 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 no. The woman, like the second one that he visited, she's he's unclogging her toilet, and then he overhears her on the phone saying, "Like, you ever had a fantasy about fucking your handyman?" And then he has this awkward exchange. He's, did you not hear that? No, I did, but she wasn't like trying to have sex with him. But she, she just wanted to, she, and if he wanted no, to, he could pursue that. But no, he did because not. Her, her kids were in the in the apartment. No, they were. That's not. That's not at all in that scene. No, 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 no. She was alone, as far as we know. But then right after that, misses out on following through with the girl at the bar. And instead decides to have a bar fight, uh, doesn't sleep with the girlfriend's mom, uh, even though she's perfectly nice. It's because the entire movie, we're watching a man who's dead inside, a man who has essentially killed himself. You see and him trying to kill himself. As I understand okay, so, why he's not doing that. So what's but your problem? But it's because so what's the your movie problem? is telling me that he's not doing that. Casey Affleck is not telling me that he's not doing she that. She definitely the is. The movie is saying, you know, you killed your family and your wife left you because we assume so you we, had a big battle. So we have a reason. That we only... So, so we have a reason for the way he acts, but he's acting very well. Yeah, it's, and, it's, and like, it's, it's established that he's antisocial and he has these opportunities and that he's somewhat charming. You can see that he's charming because a little bit of himself still lives there, but he always denies it and he always walks away from it. And then we get the reason later on in the movie. It's like that old Hitchcock thing where it's a frame of him just kind of looking at something and smiling. And then you juxtapose it to, you know, a picture of a, a woman on the beach. And then you juxtapose 
juxtapose it, same picture, juxtapose it to like children on the playground and all of a sudden he's like a menacing pedophile pervert or something. And it's just a matter of what context are you sandwiching Casey Affleck's shitty performance in between. If you're sandwiching it in between the context of in, yeah, you just, inexplicable grief, it's gonna come out as, oh, he is just heartbreakingly grief stricken. You just cited one of the greatest filmmakers of all time and just using a a cinematic technique and you're trying to use and that how reasoning it why it's bad to manipulate you, you how we perceive somebody something that good with something that he was suggesting and say that's what makes the movie bad it's the, Kenneth Logerman or whatever his name Loderman. is Logerman Logerman Loder he is Lonergan. using Cin like classic cinematic techniques to tell the story that needs to be told because it can't all be exposition. No, the, man. There's no cinematic techniques would be oh, like a slow you, dolly in on, on his face as he's like hearing a conversation. Like instead of yeah, that's doing, a little heavy doing just let's frame up the couch and have Casey Affleck pace back and forth behind the couch as he talks as Michelle Williams for the first time and learns that she's pregnant. Instead, do like, you know, like a slow dolly in on his face and we see, you know, he goes from happiness like he's hearing her, does this whole gamut of emotions. Because he's not happy to hear her. He's not happy to all of a sudden, it's like, oh, her shit. voice reminds him of his dead kids. Oh, shit, she's pregnant, and, like, I want to be happy for her, but I, I can't, think... and I'm just miserable. But, but like, wait, we want to see hey, that on hey, his face. Hey, we don't want to hey, see he's... half the frame filled up hey, with this couch. He's not happy about it. B, he doesn't care that she's pregnant. C, he doesn't want to hear from her. But we don't see that in him. You're we in, don't you're see that inventing. in him. Listen, we see you're him inventing. walking back and forth behind a couch and talking on the phone. Ethan, you're inventing a character that you want to watch on talk about Gentlemen. cinematic technique portraying emotion. I'm sorry, Ethan. I'm going to cut you guys both off there. Uh, let's talk about how you really felt about the movie. Ooh, it's lovely. I mean... Dis Darn right, lovely. Despite what Armin <laughs> despite what has the, to say. the the mood, well, I mean, despite the the content of the movie, it's wonderful. I guess. Oh, it's very sad. No, uh, b before you guys get it's in, a real upper. Before you guys actually get into it, I am I am really confused as to you know why this reviewer has to. Does this guy get paid? I think so. <sighs> National review is a thing, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the. Like, I've heard so, of that. It's like the, it's one of the. It's, like, it's right, right wing, wing right? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. He's comparing like. Uh, apples to oranges here like like i understand you may think oh, it's like a this, big stretch this american you know a movie about a soldier who comes back from war and has like ptsd flashbacks like yeah that's a real thing but that doesn't mean other people are not allowed to grieve to over. feel yeah yeah exactly and it'd be one thing if like he was having ptsd flashbacks in this movie casey affleck if you know yeah. every time he saw somebody with a lighter all of a sudden he's like, and falls to the ground. Sorry, that was really insensitive. But no, if, I, if, no, if, I mean, if that happened, like you could make that comparison. But also, like it, it sounds like it sounds like this dude shitting on Ang Lee's movie, saying that it's unpatriotic because it's showing like the sensitivity of like a soldier's like brain once they come back and like how war can mess you up. But yeah, this is also the I also fella didn't see that... that movie. So no, I haven't I, seen I don't, it. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I mean, we're it just might be guessing. a really shitty representation. Uh, this but is also the, the idea of it that sounded good. Eight years after you know Obama's been in office, Moonlight only exists because we have a black president. Yep. So yep. Uh, boo you, Armin Johnson. <laughs> I don't know, man. Keep no. working. Anyway, we dig. Yeah, please give us good quotes for the uh, debate. Just, just keep going. So, uh, no, I'm man. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, how do you guys feel about the movie? No, it's it's a like when I when it, the moment I finished watching this, I was just like, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't really. It's fine. It's fine. Like I like like Casey Affleck's good. Michelle Williams is always good. Um, so I was just like, yeah, that's a story. I, I enjoyed it, but I, I then I thought about it for 36 hours. And the, the more I thought about it, like, the more impact the movie had on me. And it's, it's, a, like, it's, it's a really, it, it gets into you. It, it digs its hooks in. And I think it's, it's partly Casey Affleck's performance. And, uh, but I think also, like, just talking during this debate, like, the way, the way that Kenneth L L Longerman uh, does, like, crap the movie. And, and the movie doesn't seem, like, all that artistic, but it's really, like, those, like, simple... Just the simple frame framing of, of like events and 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 uh, just actual shots that like really hit hit hard on what the movie's all about. It's like a sort of almost an exercise in simplicity. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need the the crazy camera work to make you see. Oh, he's gonna run the gamut of emotions as we slow Dolly in. You don't you don't need that because you do understand what he's going through and you just want to watch it play out. It's it's almost like a mumblecore movie in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. um, in a great way. And uh, you gotta rate it. Yep. Uh, what would you guys rate it? I'll give it a nine out of ten. Uh, I didn't like some of the classical opera operatic Ooh, music at times. I thought it was a little, little much. But uh, yeah, nine out of ten. Lot of, lot of thunder. 
Nine out of ten. Whole lot of thunder. It's great. Still thinking about it. Yeah, it's it's up there. Definitely. Um, so if you want to go ahead and request a movie that you'd like us to actually do an episode on, go ahead and comment below. You can also like it and subscribe to our channel. If you want to comment below of a question that you have that you want us to ask on said episode, go ahead and write that down, and Unpaid Enter Jeff will read it out loud. Yep, thank you, and good night. Thanks. Thanks.